And now my conclusions on the Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro Survival Knife. Alrighty, I took the Bear Grylls Survival Knife out with two other Gerbers. I got it at the same time, the uh, Strong Arm, now bathing in WD-40 to clean it up, and the LMF2, which is this big beastie here. Um, as is quite obvious when I do this, the knife broke. Um, I reviewed the footage, uh, which you can too, of me testing it. Um, I'm disappointed, I guess, that the knife broke and kind of bummed it. You now I can't really use this. Um, but I don't want to be too damning of the tool. Um, for a start, the world's full of variables, and while the other two Gerbers and my Falcon even survived sort of the same test without any worries at all, not even any slight bending. Um, I mean, you can't have any doubt that it was extreme and probably stupid use. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and um, scream at Gerber for making a, a completely shit knife or anything like that. Because you know, if I was just trying to, you know, make a feather stick and the blade folded, fair enough, that's a shitty knife. But it hasn't done anything like that. It's just um, this tip wasn't as strong as this tip. Uh, it's a fair, fairly um, basic conclusion you can draw from it. Um, but yeah, the world's full of variables. Maybe this one's stuck into like a softer bit of the inner and outer bark than this one. Uh, you can see how far the knife went in, um, which is pretty much the same size blade. So you can see it sort of went in about. Um, so it went in, the, that much blade's bet broke off and you can see where it bends. You can see how it sort of starts to bend up slightly about here. So it went in about probably an inch or maybe a little bit less than an inch. And the strong arm did too, and you can watch quite clearly the previous video. Um, I think the failure is obviously just simple leverage, which is obvious because I was um, putting, I was holding onto a branch above the, um, the above the knife, and um, just putting probably just a fair, fair amount of like stomp down on it. So probably about 30 or 40 kilos of pressure. Not my whole body weight. I weigh, I weigh about 80 kilos. Not my whole body weight by any means, but yeah, definitely just a, a good sort of push down. So it's probably that, or well, it's obviously that, <laughs> um, and perhaps just a minor imperfection in like the heat treat of the steel or something. Um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like that, but that's how the steel looks. It's kind of a bit like rocky looking, and which is weird. I guess you just never see steel like that. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll um, up sweep this blade and or down sweep it and make a spear point or something. It's a waste of a knife otherwise. So anyway. Um, so that's that's the obvious thing that's happened, um, but it doesn't mean that's the only thing to say about the knife. Um, I'm, apart from that, I'm thankful that it wasn't my $200 Falcon even that did it, and it's the the uh, 70, 80 dollar Bear Grylls. That would that would have sucked. Or even if just the, all of them had done it, because then I would have felt like a full on mong. <laughs> Bray just takes my take my knives out straight away and just break them all. But no, I did it with the Gerber, and the Gerber did it fine, so I thought this would be fine as well, and it wasn't for whatever reason. I'll leave that there, that's fine. Um, uh, you, it can be up to the speculation of the viewer. Um, watch it, make your own decision. I'm sure it's half idiocy, half failure at the very least. Maybe even 70% idiocy. At any rate. Uh, I was really expecting this though, and I'm not being silly here. I was kind of expecting it to be the superior knife, and perhaps this would be like a video about how I stopped going on about the cheap Chinese knives and um, you know, give them a chance, all that sort of stuff. And the other YouTube reviews that are positive about this, unless they're all like, just because they hate giving negative reviews, unless they're all lying, obviously there are good examples of this knife that have served people very well out there. So, um, But I was expecting it to be superior to the strong arm and definitely the LMF, but I don't think it is. And that's for other reasons as well. So with regard to the rest of the knife, my feelings are as follows, I suppose. So like the handle, um, getting to the handle. I like it, and um, I like the different grips it affords, so I like being able to do that. That was really comfortable, that was the most comfortable of the carving knives, holding it like that and pushing down using this part of the, of the blade, it was good. Um, with regard to holding it in general, I prefer to just kind of hold a knife like this rather than have to sl slip my index finger into any sort of pre-done grooves, but you do sort of acknowledge that this is a knife for a different person to me probably. Um, I would rather have had less guidance myself, but perhaps 
if you're not particularly skilled with a knife, and I mean this is from a monk who's just broken one, but I very rarely cut myself or over slip or cut my feet, I've never done anything like that at all, so I kind of know how to handle one generally, um, and so I kind of don't need this, but someone who doesn't, may, it's fine. The pommel seems robust, or it would have to be robust because it's that thick of the same tang steel, um, which although I would bend it probably, um, I dare say it'd be fine for impacts. Um, the other needs of the, the other features of the knife and its sheath are probably a bit superfluous to what my needs are. Like I don't generally need fire steels and whistles. Um, I just prefer to get the standalone examples. Like I, I love that Bear Grylls fire steel that just on its own the little cap. Oh, actually, um, I think that's a really good example of a fire steel. Um, and so having one on my knife because I'm carrying one anyway. Because I'm carrying this, um, don't really need the, um, the one on the knife, and I'd rather they just didn't worry about it. It would, it's all the same to me if they don't. So, but I'm sure it sells. I'm sure, it sells extra knives. But if they want to sell this, uh, which is really good, I've got a couple of these. Um, they shouldn't, um, you know, they shouldn't be too scared about not including these things. Just because it's a bad grills product doesn't mean you need to. Um, doesn't mean everything needs to have everything on it all the time. Oh, okay. Jeez, breaking everything today. <laughs> yeah, okay. Must have been some secret knack to it that I just figured out. Um, sorry, digress. Um, yeah, as regards to the whistles and these fire steel, I guess it's cool to have. And again, this would make a good kit knife, like a car or like a... If you're a camper who doesn't really carry a knife with him and just have it in your bag or something. That's probably pretty cool in case your trip gets extended and you don't have any means of making a fire. It's got a little pocket guide at the top here that you can pull out. That's cool. Um, I'd like to be able to hold this a few different ways. Uh, I'd rather they sacrifice this carbide sharpener for perhaps like a system like this where you can um, modify and carry it differently. But again, this is a knife for a different person. Um, this isn't, yeah, this isn't your bushcraft knife obviously, it's um, sort of your first, perhaps your first knife or just like your knife for someone who isn't really into knives. The only other thing I'd probably suggest is I would love if they at least just got rid of the big BG and I know it's a branding thing but um, it's all it's fine to have a knife that's high vis and it's not you know, it's easy to keep track of but a little bit garish. This looks okay, like it just says Gerber on it and it's bright and, and it looks a bit nerfish but um, yeah, just probably a bit too highly branded for me as well. I'm like, but then I'm the guy. I wouldn't even have like the, I wouldn't even have a an emblem on my car if I could. I just don't like any of that sort of stuff. So that's just completely personal. So in regards to the whole knife, it's 9CR19 MOV steel. Um, it is very sharp. The factory edge is great. It still is good. Um, I did a bit of carving with it once it had, even once it had broken. Held the edge well. It's just that. You know, I just don't know what to make of that and how to how to sort of get past that, that's all. But um, we shall and I might even pick myself up another one pretty soon and just see if it was just this one or not because a knife that they've obviously tried to they've listened to the people's problems with this one, like it feels so much better than this one straight away in hand. Like this one feels kind of light and, and just dinky a little bit. Um, they've obviously listened to our issues with this one. They've tried really hard so I've probably just got a, a one with a bloody air bubble in the steel or something, I don't know. Um, so it definitely needs more of a chance than just this video, that's all. But um, it's definitely no strong arm either. And I mean really, unless you're into this extra stuff, I'd get, definitely get this knife instead. And uh, that'll be this uh, portion of the review. Please watch the um, watch the footage in the couple of videos down of me testing the Gerber fixed blade knives to make up your own. Uh, mind I've had it all. Okay, uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, thanks for your time. Please like and subscribe and uh, share it around even. Um, I do enjoy doing this so um, yeah, if you know anyone else who likes gear reviews just flick my channel to them because I'm all about the exposure lately. I'm sort of keen on doing this and making a go of it so uh, thank you so much. See you later.